Well, folks, I made a big decision here today. I sold out of a stock completely here today. We're going to speak about what stock it was, why I sold out of that stock, and where did I put the money? I bought three stocks with this, the proceeds of that money, and uh, I want to speak about that and why I bought those stocks, okay? In this video also, I'm going to set the table for you here a bit, and we're going to talk about you know, when it's time to move on from a stock and kind of what to do in this sort of time period we're going through in this market. And then toward the end of this video, I do want to address the Tom Lee call for small caps because a lot of, I don't think many people understand the ramifications of what that means for stock prices uh, next year, okay? And so I just want to talk about if he is actually correct, what does that mean out here, okay? Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thank you so much for being here, folks. Thank you for being subscribed to the channel. I hope you're making a whole lot of money out there because it has certainly been a uh, very opportune market <laughs> over this year. I can tell you that much, okay? Appreciate y'all. Much love as always. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for being subscribed. And uh, let's go ahead and jump straight into this. So where I want to start today's video out at is uh, a message I posted in the breadcrumbs tab inside the uh, Private Stock Group's Discord chat. And I said, Hot time periods, which by the way, we're going through a hot time period right now. Hot time periods in the market can potentially be used to clean out the crap. What does that mean? It's essentially if a person holds, let's say a stock or some stocks that let's say you, you hold it over time, you're like, this company's not it, right? Because I mean, when we go to buy a stock as an investor, you always think it's a great company, you're going to make so much money, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then over coming months or potentially years, you start to realize, oh, this company's not what I thought it was and there's way better places for my money. As an investor in the market, you will always experience this, right? If you're a good investor in the market, most of the time, stocks are going to go up for you, the majority of your stocks, right? Some things are going to go way better for you. Some things are going to go, go way worse for you. That's the life of an investor. But you can use hot time periods as kind of like switching out from your crap in your portfolio. If you have some of that, which we all end up collecting some of that over time, into companies that you really want to be positioned in over the next three, three to five years that you think are very strong positions, right? And if I go through some of the positions I have in the public account, there's some stocks that have done okay for me. There's some stocks that have done phenomenal for me. And then there's some stocks that have, let's just call it, not been the ones, right? Uh, and a good example of an okay is Skywork Solutions, right? This stock's done me okay over the years. It hasn't been the greatest performer. It's paid me some really good dividend money over the years, but it's meh. It's kind of a meh stock. It's, a, it's an okay. Even Meta, even Meta stock, believe it or not, has been an okay for me because I've owned this stock for years and years and years. It's not like I just bought in last year. I loaded up on shares last year and I got a lot of shares at some very attractive pricing. But overall, I wouldn't say Meta's necessarily been a banger for me. It's been a good money maker and it's been an okay stock, but that's where I'd put that. And then there's other stocks for, for me out there, like an elf on the shelf, right? Elf, I mean, that's that would be in the category that like, that went way better than I ever thought it could. I never thought I would be holding elf shares up 1,800%. I never thought that would happen. I thought, okay, maybe elf is a 2x, 3x type opportunity. 1,800%? I never saw that coming. I would be an absolute liar if I said, oh yeah, I knew Elf was going to return me 1,800%. No, I didn't. It just went way better than I thought it did. Tesla, same exact situation. That one's gone way better than I thought it ever could have. I mean, the gains have been extraordinary, right? On the downside, some stocks have gone way worse than I ever thought they would. Good example of that is the planet, right? That, that's, that's gone way worse than I thought it would. I mean, you know, the fact that that stock's under a dollar, man, not didn't really see that coming right the chef right man did that one go bad never really saw like wow like going bk like that's crazy right and this is the market right you make some investment decision you look back and you're like damn that was pretty freaking stupid and you look back at some others and you're like great job man you, you really knocked out the ballpark and then a lot of others are kind of like eh, eh they kind of may may right now the bottom line is when you're in the market and you're, you're buying these stocks right the earlier you realize you made a mistake, the better. And as somebody that's been doing this game for 15 years now, I can just tell you, the earlier you realize, you know what, I think I got some crap here and I need to move on, the better you'll be. Trust me on that. The better you'll be. Holding on and hoping things will magically work out, why the business just gets worse and worse and worse, it's dangerous. And it usually doesn't work out, right? And if I look at what happened with the chef, perfect example of that. If I look at my other most famous mistake I made as a public creator since I've been on this platform since 2016, the other most famous mistake I ever made was a company named GoPro. Same exact situation where the business just kept getting worse and worse and worse. I looked out there and I kept hope, hope, hope. Maybe they'll turn around. I hope they turn it around. 
And hope is not a, a good investment strategy. The bottom line is when a business keeps deteriorating, you have to say, you know what? I need to move on because there's thousands of stocks in the market. There's so many opportunities out there, so much better quality out there. You've got to learn to just move on, get past that, clean out the crap, right? And don't be scared to make mistakes in the market. You will, I promise you, make mistakes. You're going to sell some lost stocks with some massive losses over time. Everybody does it. No one in this game has ever gone through and they're the biggest liar. If they say, oh yeah, I've been in the game 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years, I never sold BS, okay? Everybody makes mistakes. Warren Buffett, you can look up his mistakes and his mistakes are, you know, when he makes a mistake, it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars or the billions of dollars, right? There's so many articles out there about all the mistakes he's made over the years, which at the end of the day, you know, he's made a lot more success than he made mistakes. This is one I didn't even know about. This one, I thought I knew everything about Buffett. I never knew about this one. Dexter Shoes. In 1993, Buffett bought Dexter Shoes using $433 million in Berkshire Hathaway stock to make the purchase. The company ended up being a dud. By the time Buffett let go of the investment, it had cost Berkshire Hathaway stockholders $3.5 billion. That's crazy. I had no clue. Like, he made that sort of mistake, right? Um, this one is a, definitely one I was well aware of. This is called Tesco. And this was a, a grocery chain in the UK. And he made this big mistake with this one. He said, I made a big mistake with his investment by dwaddling. Berkshire Hathaway eventually got completely out of the Tesco position. But Buffett estimated a $444 million loss by not selling sooner, right? And he said he was dwaddling. And by the way, it wasn't a word I'm too familiar with. So I had to look it up. And it basically means be slow, waste time, right? Which is kind of like waiting around, like, eh, you know, hoping things are going to work out magically and things like that, right? It's ultimately, if things are deteriorating in a business model and you see it getting worse and worse and worse, you have to just move on, cut it, cut it while it's a, a smaller loss versus, and remember, there's a big difference between just a stock price going down and a business fundamentals going down. We're talking about a business fundamentals getting worse and worse and worse, right? If you're in a stock market crash and stocks are going down all over the the place, it means nothing in regards to that company. But when a business model just gets worse and worse and worse, it's better to act fast and say, you know what, this thing's just getting worse. I got to cut out of this. And if you got a gain on that stock, just be thankful for that gain. And if you got a loss on that stock, go ahead and move on, okay? So in regards to the stock I personally sold, right? Listen, here's the latest financials for this company. And this is a stock I've been buying here for a little bit. And, you know, I really looked at these latest financials and I was like, I, I've got to I've got to eventually move on here from this stock. I looked at sales numbers of this company. They're down considerably year over year for total revenue. Cost of sales hasn't gone down nearly as much. Income from operations has dropped off a cliff. OK, dropped off a cliff down to forty seven million dollars versus it was one hundred and sixty million dollars in the same quarter last year. If you look at the year-to-date numbers, it's astonishing. They went from $522 million in income from operations down to $109 million. So that's that's a business where, let's just be honest, it's really failing rapidly right now. And so this is is like, you've got to hope the management team can turn around, right? They went from $96 million in net income to only $28 million in net income in in this latest quarter. It's an F-grade income statement. It's bad on top of bad on top of bad. And the stock I went ahead and sold out of completely is Foot Locker. Foot Locker. I have completely liquidated all Foot Locker shares from all my portfolios. I had to do it. In the public account, for, or excuse me, this is a Patreon portfolio. The Patreon portfolio was a position in there, and uh, I got to escape with a profit. And for that, I say, thank goodness. I got to escape with a profit, and I saw that stock being up today. And I'm up 10%. And by the way, Foot Locker can keep running. As far as the stock price goes, if the Russell just keeps rolling and they keep this momentum going, Foot Locker can go $35, $40 a share, right? I got to think over the long term. And the bottom line is I got to sell these shares at 30, I don't know, 31, 30 something dollars here a day. And I'm just like, thank goodness. Because I can tell you, usually it doesn't work out where you got a business that's deteriorating and you can go ahead and put that, you know, go ahead and get out of those shares, (laughs) <laughs> for either gains or slight losses, like that is a win. And so I looked at that as like, let me out of this thing. Hope, you know, Mary Dillon, maybe she'll make it magic and the stock can go back to 40 to $60 stock where it used to be back in the day. But for me, I'm like, I, 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 I'm ready to get out of this one, right? No, I moved that money into some quality stocks and we'll talk about what stocks in just a moment. But 
we got to answer a question because you hear this term thrown around a lot like, oh, I bought quality stocks or I'm buying a quality stock. What does it actually mean? What does it actually mean? What is a quality stock? Does that mean high growth? Does that mean high profits? Does it mean low PE? What, does it mean it's been around for 50 years? What is a quality stock? Okay. I'll put it simply like this. Okay. What is a quality athlete? What is a strong athlete? A strong athlete and a quality athlete, I should be able to put them through just about any workout and they would get through that workout and be just fine. They would be strong enough physically and mentally to get through even a super hard workout for me to put them through, right? That's a quality athlete. So when it comes to a stock and a quality stock, right? A strong stock, that is a company that can get through anything. Even the worst case scenarios that you thought this would never happen, they get through it. They don't go bankrupt. They get through it and they emerge stronger coming out of that than you ever thought previously, right? And if we think about the business cycle we have been in for the past several years, we've been through an extraordinary business cycle in the last four years. Think about this for a moment. We went from pretty strong economy to suddenly almost overnight, sky high unemployment, closures, um, you know, all over the world, businesses shut down, incredible, right? To then the next year, a booming economy, right? Into massive inflation economy with a massive deceleration in the economy. And we went through all that in a four year span. Four years, folks. That's extraordinary. You never really get that many business cycles all in a four year span. As a matter of fact, I cannot think of a, of a time period in the history of economics, where we went through all four cycles in four years. I literally can't. It didn't happen in the great financial crisis. It didn't happen in, um, even in the great depression. We, we never really saw four, all of those four cycles all play out within a four year span. That's extraordinary. Extraordinary. Now we have a lot of categories that are literally facing deflation right now, right? I mean, that's a pretty extraordinary situation we have going on, right? So, I know some quality companies out there, some true qualities, and this is where I put the money, okay? The first one is Win Resorts, quality. When I think about a company that has made it through everything, uh, this company comes to mind. Okay, they've made it through the great financial crisis on that cr crazy credit crunch. They went through a situation back in, that was like 2011, 2012, where their biggest, share, their biggest shareholder outside of Steve Wynn, this guy named Okada um, in Japan, he was involved in some stuff. They had to oust him. It was a messy situation. Then the founder of the company, Steve Wynn, got in a messy situation. He got ousted from the company and had to sell all his shares. Then they went through closures, basically like three years of pretty much big closures in Macau, and then a significant closure for a couple months in Vegas. If I think about a business that has, has been through everything the past 15 years, this is exactly the business I'm thinking of. And yet, look at them. They emerge. Their properties are so well run. Their hotels are so well run. Uh, the company's in a you know, just fine financial position. And they'll be in probably a much stronger financial position over the next few years. In their brand reputation, they keep it around. It's magical. That's, that, to me, is quality. That, to me, is strong. They can make it through anything. Anything, man. Incredible. Next stock I bought here today is Meta. Meta. If I think about quality, this is as quality as it gets. When I think about when this company went IPO and no one wanted this company and no one understood it and it fell 50% from the IPO price through the next several months, like what an embarrassing kind of IPO situation that was, right? If I think about all the government stuff and all that stuff they had to deal with, right? And I think about last year, what they went through. And yet they emerged stronger and stronger and stronger as a company. And they were able to get through everything, right? And they obviously own Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, Threads. Obviously, they got the VR business, AR business. And so when I just think of a company that, man, is that company strong, 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 I think about Meta. Next stock I bought here today, Tesla. So Tesla. What, I mean, what an incredible company. When you really think about Tesla, right? And then we'll get to Tom Lee and the ramifications that has for a lot of stocks and what this means for a lot of stocks and, and all those things in just a moment, okay? Tesla, think about this for a moment, right? 
Great financial crisis, this company was on the verge of bankruptcy, right? They had no products in the market. Then they had to learn as a company how to scale a Model S. Then they had to learn how to scale a Model X. Then after that, they had to learn how to scale a very top selling vehicle in the Model 3. Then they had to learn how to scale an, an SUV that's similar to a Model 3 in the Model Y and expand their business then international with gigafactories all over the world. Now they're in the Cybertruck and you look what the engineers have done with this company and look what they've done throughout recessions and throughout even, let's call it a horrible time for kind of the auto market here over the past year, especially when it comes to interest rates, right? And yet they've made it through. And even though they've had to cut prices and even all the stuff that surrounded Elon Musk, which that's a whole circus in itself all the time, right? Elon and the publicity and negative and, you know, and Tesla, every single time something happens negative with Tesla, a million, it's all over the internet, a million people are sharing it. You know, people that don't even really care about Tesla were sharing, texting me today about Tesla has two million vehicles or all their vehicles forever made that they got a recall out there. And it's like, you realize that's an over the air update. Like they can, they can literally knock that out, right? And it's just like, you know, like whoever texts other people about a recall, that doesn't happen. There's recalls all the time in vehicles, but Tesla, it's big news. And so you think about everything this company's been through and yet, Coming out of that, they end up emerging stronger and stronger and stronger. And so this time period we're going through right now will eventually end. And then the company will emerge stronger and stronger and stronger. And if I think about they've just been through a lot, man. And yet they always make it out to the other side. And then, you know, next thing you know, everybody and their grandma wants to own Tesla stock. And so that's, that to me is quality. If I see a, a team in place, that is quality, folks. Quality. And so... Those are all moves I made in the uh, Patreon portfolio today, which by the way, if you want to join me on Patreon, check out the pinned comment down there. This is the last chance to be the first year member and supporter of the Patreon. We are literally, let's see, uh, we started the Patreon in January of last of, of this year, right? January of this year. So, you know, we're running out of time here. If you want to be a first year member and supporter of the Patreon, you know, join now, pin comment down there. Okay. Tomley. So, and obviously you get to see the moves I make every single week in the Patreon portfolio there, okay? Tom Lee, uh, this man's now predicting the Russell's going to around 3,000 in 2024. And currently the Russell 2000 small cap stocks are about 2,000. Now it's important to understand if he's correct on this, which I would not bank on him being correct on this. I'm bullish on small caps for next year, but this man's a whole other level of bullish on small caps, okay? If he is correct, you gotta understand how much this is going to move stocks? Like, wh where do these stock prices go with some stocks? And so I'm going to give you a few examples here of what will happen to some of these stocks if he is correct on this, okay? And it's pretty darn astonishing what could likely play out here, okay? So if he's correct, and we're going to really see the Russell rise 50% next year, you're going to see a stock like a Fubo, which is almost like a call option on the Russell. You could see that stock, which by the way, that stock's up 100 plus percent year to date. And check out its performance versus a Russell. It's not even remotely close. If he's correct about that, a stock like Fubo could move 300 to 500 percent next year. That's insanity, pure insanity. But you know what's even more insane? Let's say hypothetically this happens. Okay, let's say he is 50 percent up call for the Russell and Fubo goes up 300 to 500 percent. This is even more insane. If that happened, that means Fubo is going to be let's call it 10 to 15 dollars, somewhere in there, right? The stock was $42 in, $42, way, it was actually way over $42 at one point, $42 in January 2021, which would mean the stock, even if that happens, even after 100% gain this year, and let's say 300 to 500% next year, and his whole scenario plays out here, the stock would still be down 70%. 70% from 2021. That's one of the most crazy stats you'll ever find right there, folks which just goes to show you really how much of a crazy cycle that was back in 2021 and how that was just something that we'll probably never see again. The fact that this stock goes up 100% plus this year and could go up 300 to 500% next year under you know this assumption that the Russell just goes insanity mode, and yet the stock would still be down like 70%. That's wild, man. Absolutely wild. A stock would revolve. What happens if Tom Lee's scenario plays out there? Well, this stock would probably 2x to 3x, I would estimate, right? Look at it on today, 7% when the Russell was up 2%-ish, uh, right? 
So it's almost like a 3x of the market. And if his scenario plays out, I would say probably the stock 2x's or 3x's next year if his scenario plays out, which means this is probably a 34 to let's call it $50 stock at this time next year, which if it's 34, let's say for instance, and the stock 2x's next year, it's still down like 50% from where, <laughs> where it was in October of 2021. That's, in, that's crazy, man. And by the way, this wasn't even the highs. If I recall, Revolve actually hit like $90 a share or something around there. Uh, actually, you know, around this time period. So this is the wildest thing in this market, right? What happens to a company like Honest? Honest, probably 3Xs to 5Xs if his scenario plays out and Smalls really roll the way he thinks they're going to roll. And so that would put the stock, let's call it $9 to $15, which... If you look at back where, you know, shortly it was after IPO, it was $16. So, I mean, down massively still from even where it went IPO back in 2021, which is fascinating. It's fascinating to think the market could go insane mode for small caps. These stocks could just do things that people never thought possible. And yet their stocks would still be down epically from where they were in 2021. What a time, man. What a time. By the way, and if you're wondering, is it possible for stocks to go up hundreds of percent in a year? Oh, oh yeah. Um, look at a lot of stocks this year, right? Look at a stock like a Fubo, 100% plus, right? Look at a stock like Palantir this year. You know, and Palantir is not even that small cap of the stock. Look at a stock like Carvana this year. Look at a firm stock this year. A firm stock is up close to 400% this year. Close to 400%. Look back at coming out of the great financial crisis and what happened was, I mean, the amount of stocks that went up 200 to 500% over that next year, year and a half coming out of the great financial crisis, a long list of stocks, I can tell you that much. And so don't think it's impossible that stocks could go up several hundred percent, but it's just fascinating to think these stocks could do that and still be down just epically from 2021 levels. Pretty crazy, right? No. I just signed uh, inside the prep stock group. We got the six figure club, right? Which is this, this guy right here, the six figure diamond award. And then we got the seven figure club in there, right? Which you get one of these dogs. And uh, I just signed six, six figure awards, which is exciting, right? We, you know, it's been a while since I've been signing a lot of awards. And so it's exciting that we're finally going through a time period when, you know, you know the retail investors starting to do really well and they're hitting new milestones, either six figures, seven figures. Um, it's really exciting, right? But with that being said, I think it's very important over this next year, okay, let's just call it that, from now until next December, to stay very balanced in the market. This is extremely important because what I saw from the retail investor community at the end of 2020 into the beginning of 2021 was not balanced. It got into insane FOMO, everybody's going to be a billionaire in the market and things like that. It's very important you stay balanced, this, this run we're on right now, okay? Don't get too bullish. Don't get too bearish. Because what I've seen time and time again from, actually, Wall Street does this as well. I love to say it's just retail, but Wall Street does the same dang thing. Everybody gets like so euphoric or so depressed in the market. And everybody thinks either stocks are going to a million or stocks are going to zero. Neither is happening, okay? Neither is happening. Stay balanced. It is so important. Kind of like the balance on this lighting, which is not very good. You want to be more balanced than this lighting on this video right now, okay? Balance is everything, right? If I just break down the last four Decembers with you, right? December 2020 was probably the most bullish market I've ever seen in my life. I mean, you know, that end of 2020 into the beginning of 2021, I've never in my life seen any sort of craziness like that. I don't think we're going to see something like that again for a long time. I, I think it could be 10, 20 years. The only time period you can ever, you can ever relate to that particular time period was the tech bubble. And that's it in terms of just people over the moon, right? And it was with stocks and then it was riskier stocks. And then it was, you know, everybody was playing altcoins and then it was NFTs. NFTs was the final, final boss that took everything down, right? But that's what it was at that time period. Then December, 2021, I would say overwhelmingly it was still bullish, but there was starting to be some concern that started to creep in the market at least. So it was, I would call December, 2021, much less bullish than December, 2020. Okay. Then there was December 2022, right? Last year, which was insane bearishness. Oh my gosh, the momentum. It was like, if you bought any stock, you were like demonized. Like, whoa, you're clueless. We're going to have the biggest recession ever next year. It's going to be horrible. Why are you buying now? Get ready to buy 50% lower at this time next year. Or get ready to buy 
150% higher is what they should have been saying because that's the truth on a, on a lot of the big tech stocks, right? But that's where we were at at this time last year. Everybody was just insanely bearish. I mean, it was incredible. It was like, you know, if you bought a stock, you were villainized. And then 2023, December 2023, I'd say we're starting to get bullish, right? If you look at AI sentiment, it's starting to go bullish. If, you know, the Tom Lees are all of a sudden being respected again, which is very different because last year at this time, Tom Lee was the biggest villain on Wall Street. I read the comments every time Tom Lee would go on uh, in the fourth quarter of 2022, and people were just destroying him in the comments section, how he doesn't know anything. Blah, I mean, just... I mean, they said a lot of really bad things about Tom Lee last year. It was nasty, right? And now, suddenly, people are coming around. They're starting to respect him. On the flip side, Mike Wilson, super bear, was so respected last year at this time. Now he's the villain. He doesn't know anything is what people are saying, right? People are being so mean to him. And so, this is just insanity. This, like, over-the-moon bullishness and in over-the-moon bearishness. And, I mean... It's, that's foolish. That's foolish. That's foolish, okay? We've got to stay balanced. We've got to stay balanced. Don't get too bullish. Don't get too bearish. When, when you go to that sort of spectrum, I'm just telling you, you're setting yourself up for problems. Big problems. Because if you go so insane bullish, the next thing you start thinking is, I need to start margining. Because what I got going on is not enough. I need to, I need to invest more, 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 more. We're, we're going, we're going, we're going. More, more, more. And then you start thinking, why am I margining? Why am I not going call options? I need to be going heavy call options. Like I can make a thousand percent on this call option, 2000%. Who am I worried about a hundred percent of the stock, right? You go insane bearish. What happens? You sell out of everything. You dump your entire portfolio. You don't buy any great stocks and great assets at good prices. Neither one of those is healthy. Both of those are fool's game. Both of those are a fool's game, folks. Okay. It's been proven statistically again and again and again. Okay. Stay focused. Add long-term great assets. If you're a high net worth individual, do some hedging. And other than that, let it be what it's going to be. Okay. You know, don't, don't feel the fluctuations of all this nonsense, right? It's all not healthy. It's not healthy for your health <laughs> and it's not healthy for your portfolio's health either. But just, you know, stay balanced. Balance is everything over this next 12 months. Okay, folks. Okay. Appreciate you joining me as always. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for being subscribed. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you got some really good value out of this one. Uh, Patreon portfolio is looking strong like Donkey Kong. You want to join me? Last chance to be one of the, uh, you know, people that joined in the first year of that Patreon. See that portfolio being built from the ground up and be a first year supporter there. That is a pinned comment down there. Much love and have a great day.